Starting or growing your business is hard work. But now you are listening to the Better Business Podcast with me, Steve Cook, and I'm going to try and make it a little easier on you. We on this podcast help you grow a better business with real advice from professionals, and today is no different. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, whatever the time is for you listening to this episode. This is a new format of episode that I wanted to try out, and that is somewhat of a case study. And if you, after listening to this, find it interesting and have any interest at all in me talking about or thinking about your business, it can be completely um, anonymous. You don't, we don't have to say the name of your business. You can simply shoot me an email. I will include that in the show notes to this episode. If you would like me to cover your business after hearing this episode, this episode in particular is an imaginary case study on a small town restaurant. And what I want to do is go over maybe a hypothetical situation. If I owned a small town restaurant, some things that I think would be unique, some things that would perhaps set it apart from the other over 1 million restaurants that are in the United States today. Many of those are in a small town. And I, of course, think that it's natural to ask the question, you know, after seeing many of these small town restaurants come and go throughout my life that I grew up in different small towns, I think it's natural for a business person to ask, what would I do if I owned a restaurant? Would I be able to be successful in this town? Would I be able to be successful with this type of restaurant? And so that is going to be the culmination of our episode today. And that is, what would I do if I had a restaurant in a small town? I propose to you that I would do three things, and they are all around the idea of being creative in the certain um, aspects of the way you set up your business and some of the small nuances. And I think that if you are a small business owner that has a restaurant, I think that these are things that you could easily implement. Of course, I don't have a specific restaurant in mind while doing this, so this was all imaginary things. However, if you do have a restaurant and you want to tell me some things that you struggle with or whatever it might be, I would be more than happy to take those things that you say into consideration and try to maybe um, change this case study up a little bit to more specifically um, cover the nuances of your specific industry or your specific business. Again, we can keep that completely anonymous or we can simply say the name of your restaurant or business on an episode totally up to you. And again, I will send put my email in the show notes of this episode. So of the three things that I would do with a small town restaurant, the first thing I would do is to create a signature menu item. Some statistics that I was looking at earlier today said that 78% of millennials say that they would rather spend money on an experience rather than purchasing an item at a store. You know, I think that you see this mindset in a lot of social media, right? You see these experience attention grabbing things that people post on social media. You see pictures at concerts. You see pictures at sometimes restaurants. You see pictures at parks or at events or at birthday parties, but rarely does somebody hold up a pair of pants and say, look at these pants that I just bought. Look at this purse that I just bought. You know, I think oftentimes it's more exciting to talk about experiences and things that you did. And of course, 78% of millennials say that they would rather spend money on an experience because that's what makes you happy. You know, in the book, The Happiness Advantage, Sean Acor wrote about how experiences, especially spending experiences with your loved ones, tend to make people way happier than just buying things over and over and over. So I think experiences, first off, will make a, an individual happy, but this idea of having an experience is also noteworthy to put on different social media platforms, whether that be TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, or the like of those. 
so what I would do is create this signature attention grabber with all those things in mind. We know that people like experiences. We know that experiences can be notable to put on social media. You could get some organic traffic to your restaurant's uh, pages from that. So let's create an, 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 a signature um, menu item. Maybe it's a dessert item. You know, I was thinking of um, maybe when I was in high school or college age, there was this restaurant in the Oklahoma City area that actually had um, a dessert item that was similar to a pinata. It was a chocolate dessert item shaped in the form of a ball, and they these people would hit it with a little stick, and it would explode like a pinata and fall onto this plate. And then inside was all this like fruit and different things. Um, and that was an experience. And I can't tell you how many, I never even visited the restaurant. I don't even know what restaurant it is now. I can't remember, but I can't tell you how many people time and time again, posted a stupid video of them or their friends doing that at a table, busting this little pinata and all the fruit falling out. It was so popular on social media. I think a lot of people went to this restaurant just so they could get that one menu item. So I would create a dessert that would would be notable, something that you would want to take a video of or take a picture of. I was thinking of maybe an obnoxious shake with an entire piece of of cake in it or a, or a cupcake in it or or a a full-size brownie in it or something that's so obnoxious it's 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 huge. It's the size of a football or something like that. Maybe you could create some sort of appetizer that would um be so so obnoxious it was so unique maybe it was alligator uh claws or something like that or or snake skin sprinkled on top or or you know uh, some sort of gold sprinkled throughout and it's real gold and you can eat it or or something like that you know some sort of attention grabbing dessert or appetizer of some sorts or or perhaps a drink a signature drink that you could create to to create some sort of buzz and not only the people in the restaurant will see this but hopefully this will spread virally to social media and hopefully people will tell their friends about it hey we went to this restaurant the other night you wouldn't believe the dessert that we got we saw this other people carry this shake by and we just had to get it you know or maybe the nine-year-old was crying at the table and they couldn't leave the restaurant without it so I would create this this signature attention grabbing menu item that could also be a drink like I mentioned earlier. The point is to have something that can not only grab attention, not only create some sort of buzz, but also I think that if it is a dessert or it's an appetizer, it's a drink of some sort, this can actually raise your per ticket, your average ticket. Um, raising your average ticket, of course, can raise your sales without actually adding any more customers to your restaurant. But I would not necessarily, this is my opinion, I wouldn't necessarily make it another menu item. You know, if you made your signature dish another menu item, someone will have to choose between your burger or this wild uh, uh, menu item. Or they'll have to choose between your uh, pizza or this wild menu item or whatever it might be. And let's say this 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 attention grabbing thing is a little bit out there, and it might not even taste that good, but people do it just for the video or whatever that might be. That could leave a bad taste, pun intended, in someone's mouth that they might not want to necessarily come back to your restaurant. Or yeah, it was a cool menu item, but their food was not that great. Let's put our best foot forward in the menu item and just create an additional dish or an additional drink or appetizer or something like that that can just be an attention grabbing thing beyond your normal menu. So the second thing that I would do, two out of three here, is I if I owned a small hometown restaurant, I would triple down on catering. I would triple down on a a home experience of some sorts. I would triple down on takeout food whatever you want to call it, I would triple down on getting food outside of my doors. You know, your restaurant can only hold so many people. Your bakery can only hold so many people. Your donut shop can only have so many people. Your coffee shop, whatever restaurant or service that you have in the food industry, it can only take so many people at one time, especially in your lobby. I would create an additional business. I know that People can call your restaurant and order food right now, but I would actually put a lot of um, 
thought, a lot of motivation, and put additional people in charge of this home experience. The statistic I read said that 45% of people eat out multiple times per week. That's 45% of people eat out multiple times a week, and 20% go out once per week. So you have 65% of people that eat out every week, and if your business is in a rural town, I would not want to be competing with, you know, you have 60% of people that eat out every week. However, a lot of those people might be driving to a, a nearby metro. They might be driving to a different town. They might just be grabbing fast food on the way home, whatever that might be. And so I would not want to just compete with other restaurants and trying to get people in your doors at that time. I would also compete with the grocery stores. I would also compete with places that you can take home food like pizza um, and different things like that and actually dedicate services. I would dedicate employees and staff specifically to the phone lines and not just your cashier, someone that is solely responsible for the phones. I would dedicate someone that is solely responsible for the website and having a great website experience. And I would also, hear me out, consider taking one or two or three nights out of the week and focusing on delivery. Of course, if you can make it easy and you can make it consistent, you can say, we deliver every Friday and Saturday nights, or we deliver every um, um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever it might be, or we deliver every um, day from noon to close or whatever it might be. But I would dedicate a certain amount of time for delivery. Now, keep in mind, this is a small rural restaurant. So this might not be um, something that you can just sign up for Grubhub or sign up for DoorDash or sign up for Uber Eats. You might actually have to make a deal with someone in your hometown that would take this food around for an ag agreed amount rate um, and do that. There's lots of apps and uh, there's lots of delivery apps, especially on Shopify. If your website is on Shopify, um, there's lots of ways to set that up where you can um, select certain zip codes or radius from your location um, and times that you can deliver, things like that, all on e-commerce websites. So that is the second thing I would do is is focus on and, and concentrate on catering and take out um, this take-home experience because man, you can just capture so much larger of a, a audience. And not only that, but if you run that business as one and you run the in-restaurant experience as one, that is like running two businesses out of one kitchen. And you are able to leverage your kitchen costs so much more um, by doing that. You can you can utilize those, those kitchen expenses, your overhead so much more by adding an additional business that also cooks in that same kitchen. Third and final thing that I would do in a small rural restaurant is plan my food waste. It's said that 79% of restaurants express that they deal with some sort of food waste every day. A nearly 80% of people are dealing with some sort of waste in their restaurants. I ask you, do you have a plan for this waste? What a shame that somebody like a, a donut shop comes to the end of the day. They come to the time that it's 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 we're ready to leave, and they take that tray and they shove it right into the trash can. I've seen videos of people that throw out food from restaurants every night. I've seen a countless number of um, videos of of you know you see the the person on drugs or the homeless person or whatever it might be that is digging in the dumpster, dumpster diving because there's so much great food in the dumpster that people just throw out. I am obsessed with this idea that you can actually plan on what you're going to do with your food waste. Let me explain. Let's say that you work at a local office in a small town. You have um, let's say 10 to 15 people that come into your office on a daily basis. And all of a sudden, one day, the owner of the local donut shop walks in and drops off three dozen donuts. Yes, they're not fresh, hot off the press at eight o'clock in the morning, but even one o'clock, let's say between one and four o'clock is when most people snack anyways. 
and the local uh, owner of the donut shop comes by and drops off three dozen donuts and says, hey, I had some extra donuts today. Just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Becky, and I want to drop off these donuts as a, as a nice gift and uh, just want to say hi and uh, introduce myself. That would go buzzing throughout the office. Everyone would say, hey, when did these donuts get here? Who brought the donuts? At least in our office. Uh, people would ask, you know, who brought these so I can tell them thanks. Quickly throughout the entire restaurant, they would say, hey, the donut uh, person that owns the donut shop actually brought those by and said she had made too many donuts today and just wanted to uh, drop those off to us. Of course, you could say I was going to throw those these away, but if you say I overcooked a little bit or or I just wanted to drop some of these off or I just wanted to introduce myself, here's some donuts, let's just leave it up to that person's imagination and maybe not tell them, hey, I was going to throw these away, but I figured I'd bring them by here instead and kind of downplay it. Maybe we could upplay it a little bit and say, I just thought of you guys. I overcooked a little bit and thought that you guys might enjoy these. Perhaps you could do this with all different kinds of things in a restaurant. I know a lot of places have additional food. Now, that is example was with someone that closes at lunchtime when a lot of businesses are still open. And of course, most restaurants close at 8, 9, 10 p.m., sometimes 11 p.m. or something like that. And so that would be a little bit harder to deal with, but I still can think of multiple examples. I think of of high school basketball games or something like that. You could take a uh, a tray or a carton of food to a high school basketball game and say, you know, this restaurant just had a bunch of extra whatever it might be, and uh, uh, drop it off there. There's um, all different kinds of examples I can think of that you could still have a group of people in mind. Maybe it's a, a local firehouse or something like that with guys that um, stay up late at night. Um, have a plan in place that, hey, if I have extra food this day, I'm going to take it here. They've got 15 to 20 people here. If I have extra food this day, just a little bit, I'm going to take it to these four people. If I have this much extra food, I'm going to take it to these 10 people. And plan out some places that you could take this food and utilize that waste as marketing. Of course, it would be a lot easier and a lot cheaper on your labor side to just throw those things away. But I think that just putting a little bit of effort into taking it somewhere could go a long ways in your marketing. You're getting free marketing out of that. Maybe not free, but it is marketing that you would waste and throw it away into a trash can. Um, so plan on what to do with your wasted food, I think, is the third thing that would make me unique as a restaurateur. Um, so, of course, it's fun for me to speculate about other industries and, and kind of play devil's advocate, and this is what I would do in my situation. I know that running a restaurant is one of the most incredibly stressful things um, that you can do in owning a business. So I don't want to make light of the subject that it's just easy peasy, um, especially in a era of COVID. However, these are hopefully some things that um, made you think and, and perhaps you could implement into your business. Again, like I said at the beginning, if you have any interest at all in me coming up with some ideas for your business, you, it can be a, a business that you're struggling in right now, or you might be doing great and just, hey, what would you do in my business? And maybe I could bounce a few ideas off of you and create another episode of the podcast with that. So again, I will put my email in the show notes for that purpose. I hope that you found this episode useful and thank you for listening to another episode of the Better Business Podcast. Hey, thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Better Business Podcast with me, your host, Steve Cook. You know, starting or growing a business is hard work, so I hope that today's advice made it just a little bit easier for you. We'll be sharing more about this exact topic all this week on my social platforms. You can find me on Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, or if you would like to get a, a personalized blog post from me on this topic, you can join my email list and I will send you an email once a week. You can check the show notes to subscribe to that or find me on my website, whatever's easier for you. Now get out there and go grow a better business with this advice from today's Real Pros. Thank you for listening.